The sadness in Lillian Ayoko's eyes is evidence of the numbing pain that takes over each time she remembers her departed son, who died in circumstances that are far known to her or her family. To Ayoko, April 11, 2014, will forever remain a horrific day, enshrined in her memory, and picking up the pieces is a journey she hasn't embarked on, saying that she is yet to get over the anger, frustration, and loss. A teary-eyed Ayoko recalls how she trusted her songbird Bible-reading house girl. The loss is far more complicated because the only eyewitness to this tragedy is her four-year-old son, Christopher. She was the type who'd sit alone at the balcony. She told me she wanted to record a song. So she could just write songs, sing them. She was always sitting with her Bible. You know, it, it was the last thing you'd expect from her. The minor was locked up in a dark house for hours before his parents came home. For the little boy, there is very little that he can tell his parents or the police. She recalled that fateful day. Yeah, my baby was uh, two and a half months, and uh, Friday was just uh, Friday the eleventh was just like any other day. I left and uh, went to work. Uh, at around uh, ten, I called in. Uh, she said the baby was okay. She was feeding him. And then at around 12, she called me and asked uh, if uh, she can add baby more milk. Now, uh, what happened is that uh, uh, baby only used to take one bottle. He was not used to uh, drinking with the bottle. So he'd last with uh, at least the 250 ml uh, the whole day. So that day when she asked, I actually asked her, has she finished the milk? And then she told me that almost, it's not over yet, but uh, he is almost done. And um, I asked her to let me know once he does, but if he does sooner, by around four, she can just remove uh, for him. And apparently, um, Okay, that was the last conversation we had because I tried calling at around four and uh, she, uh, uh, I could not reach her. And uh, in most cases, when I called her and her phone could not go through, it, uh, in, uh, in most cases, she would be on an, another call. Yeah, okay, so uh, we got home. Uh, you know the traffic. We got home by around seven because I left the office at five. So we got home at around seven and... Uh, uh, when we approached here, okay, I tried calling several times while I, while I was in the vehicle, but when we reached here, uh, uh, the the house was still uh, uh, the house was still dark. The lights were not on, and uh, the clothes were outside. It, it was raining, so that's when uh, okay, we knew something was wrong. Ayoko explained, at that moment, my instincts went off and I knew something was amiss, and I immediately went into panic. Um, we, we started calling out her name and uh, Chris' name, and uh, Chris came out. He's able to reach uh, the kitchen lock, so he was able to open the door. And he, the first question was that, where is auntie? That's when we knew that there was a problem. So my husband climbed onto the balcony and um, uh, at least he knew, uh, by that time we knew Chris was okay. And uh, he found that the house help threw the key at the balcony. So he gave me the key and he came in to look for Leon. So uh, he, uh, the moment he lifted him, okay, that's when he came to tell me at the door that actually there's bad news. So I thought maybe she had raided the house or something, but he told me that the baby's dead. Ayoko said those words went past her like a dream, and she held on to the baby even as her husband went to report to the police station. So we rushed him to the hospital, and the doctor checked on him, the vitals and all that. And uh, he said that uh, he had passed on more than two hours ago because he was already cold and stiff. Yeah, so... Yeah, it was a uh, foregone case, yeah. The uh, cause of death was suffocation, but uh, the doctor also uh, noticed traces of blood uh, in his lungs and heart. So those ones were sent to the government pathologist. Yeah, so mm -hmm. we are, feedback is after three months. Her husband then rushed to the police station to report the matter, and they later joined her at the hospital and walked to the house to have a look and thereafter to the police station where they recorded statements. 
during that time I was in the hospital. I was just holding my baby. My husband is the one who went to report. He went at around 8 and uh, they came back at around 11. Yeah. So Okay, uh, I wouldn't say, but uh, they still needed to record a statement. They needed to uh, get the vehicles and all that. Maybe their procedures take a while. Yeah, so it took roughly three hours. Yeah. That was on 11th, it happened. We recorded the statement. We took him to the mortuary. So we, we had Saturday and Sunday to arrange uh, everything. And uh, we finalized on Monday and we buried him on Tuesday. As the family buried their baby Leon a week later, police at Buruburu Police Station say they are still searching for the suspect. But the lead investigator, Inspector Moses Mokaya, says the case is complicated as they have very little to go by. Uh, when uh, you lose someone you love, you don't, okay, from experience, I, I, I don't know what I'm feeling until today. I don't know. Yeah. I can't explain it. It's just there's a vacuum. Yeah. Mm. It's pain and anger and frustration, all those combined. So, yeah, mm. it's kind of challenging. But we trust in God because he's given us strength uh, from all that has happened. Yeah. And uh, we still have Chris. We have to be strong for him. Mm -hmm.